Hi guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install the N64 SDK in Windows 2000 and Windows 98. To do this I've created a custom ISO based on the SDK files that are available from ultra64.ca. The ISO I've built has all the tools you'll need, so it has the SDK, the operating system and the sound tools built into one. So in VirtualBox I'm going to load that ISO here. And it's going to launch a batch file which I created, which will launch all the installers for the development kit. So you can just click next on all of these. There are quite a few separate installers that need to run. The typical option in these installers will install all the options by default. If you click a little too fast like I did just there, it will get stuck on this blue screen, it will look like it's not doing anything, just alt tab and you'll get back to the actual installer that's supposed to be running. I'm not going to go through what each of these tools does, I've included the documentation as well, so you can have a read through that and I'll give you a better understanding of what all these different components do. So that's the SDK setup. The batch file will now install the operating system files for the N64, so just press enter and it will continue with that. This step can take a while. Um, there are quite a lot of files to be copied over. Okay, the next step once you've got the sound tools, uh, once you've got the operating system installed, is to install the sound tools. They do depend on the operating system, so you do have to do that first. So this is the correct location where I've installed the uh, sound tools. Oh, sorry, the operating system. Okay, once it's done that, then it's going to copy over the manual, and there's also a batch file that I created just to make it a little bit easier to actually start the development. So I'll step through that in a moment. This is the README. You can have a quick look through this as well. At some point, I just put some useful information here, particularly for Windows 98, but I'm going to cover that in a moment anyway. So one thing that I recommend doing is uh, going to Tools and Folder Options, going to View, and then showing Hidden Files and Folders, and also showing the extension for those files. So what we have installed here is, this is the SDK itself here. This has all the tools that were installed. The Ultra folder contains the actual operating system um, and it also includes GCC, which we'll need to actually build the ROMs. N64 tools contains the sound tools and then N64 manual con uh, contains the manual for the N64 dev kit and the manual for the sound tools here. Now, in the Nintendo folder, I've created this n64.bat. Um, all that's going to do is it's going to go into your root directory. You can change this to point to wherever you're developing your N64 files if you have a specific project folder. And then it calls, um, it opens up a new command terminal, it keeps that terminal open. And it will call the setup batch file from Ultra from the Ultra folder. Essentially, what that does is it sets up some environment variables, um, and it calls these other two GCC setup bat files. Now, the reason you can't just run this batch file is that it will only in Windows 2000 the environment variables it set up will only exist for the lifetime of that. Um, like the terminal, so I'll just demonstrate that here if I just see you want to. If I run that batch file and then check the path, you'll see these files got added. But if I open up um, another command terminal, those environment variables aren't actually permanent, they only exist for the length of this terminal. So by running that um, N64 bat file that I created here, 
you'll have a terminal where those um, those are already up and running. You need these path files to actually make ROMs. So I'll go through the process of doing that now briefly, just giving an overview. There are some demo ROMs in both the, or some demo files in both the Nintendo and Ultra folders. Um, I will build the ones in the Nintendo folder. So in the sample folder, there are, there are various ROMs. I'm just going to build them and maybe I'll cover those and um, actually run those in another video. Okay, so to actually uh, create a ROM from these files, all you need to do is to make, and it will go ahead and create the ROM, and that ROM file is this N64 file over here. So you can load that up into an emulator or onto your EverDrive, um, whatever works for you, and, and then you'll be able to run that. I do recommend using Windows 2000 over Windows 98. It's a little bit easier to get it up and running. There's USB support already built in, uh, and the graphics drivers are a little bit better. But for those of you who want to do it on Windows 98, I'm just going to go through that process for you now. So in Windows 98, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. You'll need to install a display driver. I have included one on the ISO. So I'm just going to load that up now and show you that driver, although I do already have it installed. I'll go through the setup process as well. Um, I'll, I'll speed through this in the video. Okay, so now that we have everything installed in Windows 98, I'm just going to right click and explore the ISO. And there's a folder here called Windows 98 Drivers. If you look in this, you can see I've included a USB driver that will allow you to use USB flash sticks without having to have a drive lick. And also a display driver here, which will allow you to use resolutions above the default of um, 600 by 480, I believe. Um, there is an upside to using Windows, which is that if you don't want to use the N64 file, this batch file that I created, you can just edit the auto exec in the C drive. Again, you'll have to go to tools and uh, display all folders, but you can right click edit auto exec and just call the um, ultra setup batch file from here instead. And you'll see that in the um, command prompt, those environment variables will always exist, or not. I uh, think that I may not have pointed this in the right direction. Well, I didn't have the SDK installed when Windows started up. I'll just restart just to show that that does work. The path does point to GCC, so you should be able to run make without any issue. And I will quickly make one of the other samples from the Ultra folder. So there's demo folder here and it does have some ROMs in it. So if I CD into that directory. Okay, so if we look in this directory, we should be able to run make and uh, create this ROM here. So it's called make. And again, because the path variables are all set up, it should just create a nice uh, N64 file for us here. I uh, set specific icons for it. That's why it shows up as a little chip. Okay, uh, last thing, just to cover this quickly because it's a bit confusing. In the display doctor, in order to actually enable the uh, the driver, you need to click here on properties, then click here on the di on display driver, and then click here on active driver, and this will let you switch from the standard driver to this nucleus driver, which you need to um, enable high resolution modes. It, it won't do this automatically when you first install this driver, so that that can be a bit confusing. Okay, cool. I um, hope this video helped. I'll probably do another one where I show off uh, some of the sample 
um, ROMs that are included with the dev kit. If you have any questions, just post them below in the comments and I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching.